future. Child care is always available um, from children birth through five years. You can drop your kiddos off at any point during worship that you need through this door here. Um, the nursery is located all the way at the end on the first floor um, in the preschool wing. And children ages four years old through fifth grade are welcome to come with us to godly play immediately following our time with the younger church. All are invited upstairs in Fellowship Hall for coffee hour and snacks right after worship. Um, the stairs are located also through this door. You'll start to notice there's a lot located through this door. <laughs> I'd like to ask Laura to come forward with an announcement related to communion from our Earth Care team. Good morning. Just a reminder, it is Communion Sunday, and we have been using compostable communion cups for the last several weeks, or several months. Um, so I just wanted to remind you the proper disposal of these. So it will help the Earth Care team collect them at the end. If you are on the first floor of the sanctuary, please just place them in the cup holders in the pews. You can leave them there after worship. And if you're upstairs, there are baskets at the end of each of uh, the railings um, where you can place the cups. Thank you very much. I invite you to check out your bulletin for a number of ways you can get involved this week and the weeks ahead. Through Grace to Go, volunteers are needed for January 28th as we prepare healthy meals for distribution in the community. All are invited to the Presbyterian Women's Circle, which meets tomorrow, January 8th at 10 a.m. in the lounge. Additionally, you can sign up for confirmation through mid-January and for youth group, you already know what grog is, but I do not. <laughs> so come teach me how to play this Leesburg Presbyterian favorite church, favorite game called grog, and we'll eat pizza together and learn more about Montreat and Massanetta too. With hearts full of love, of tenderness, of grief, of everything we carry this morning, let us worship God.
Good morning. Uh, would you please rise as you're comfortable and join me in the call to worship, uh, followed by this morning's opening hymn, number 110, Love Has Come. In new years and new beginnings, God is our guiding light. From seeds tucked into the earth to land that regenerates during seasons laying fallow, God is our creator and the spirit of emergence and imagination. Let us worship God. Please be seated. As we come to this time of confession, will this year be a time of new life, new ways for us, or will we continue to live the same old way? Let us confess to our God our failures and our hopes as we, as we begin this year. And jointly, God of every moment, we admit that we make time for so much and seldom make time to be still and know you. Forgive us and make us new. In the moments to come this year, remind us that there is a time for everything. Lead us to live with hope, to share joy, to seek justice, and to root our lives in you. Hear our prayers of confession now in silence. Amen. Friends, last year is over. Our words, our thoughts, our deeds are in the past. Today, this very moment, we begin anew for today and every day. God offers us life and hope. This year, let us live as such people. Amen. Uh, now, the response hymn number 701, uh, we're singing it two times, Lord, prepare me.
Let us pray. May the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The Narrative Lectionary is a four-year cycle of readings, and on the Sundays from September through May each year, the texts follow the sweep of the biblical story from creation all the way through the early church. From Christmas to Easter, there is a sustained reading of one of the four Gospels, and this is something new for us. Then from Easter to Pentecost, the texts will be chosen from Acts and Paul's letters. And then for you early planners who are already thinking about next fall, I know you're dying to know that from September through mid-December, the preaching texts begin with the early chapters of Genesis, move through the stories of Israel's early history, the Exodus, the Kings, the Prophets, the Exile, and Return. Ooh. Why are we doing this? The texts include the major episodes in scripture this way, and they're engaged in a narrative sequence to help us understand scripture as a story that has some coherence and this dynamic movement. So from now through Lent, we will read almost the entirety of the Gospel of Mark together, week by week. Today, we begin at the beginning. So listen for the word of God through Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. So as mentioned, this morning's first reading is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. Um, it includes the proclamation of John the Baptist as well as the baptism of Jesus. Following Jesus' baptism, he was driven into the wilderness and tempted by Satan. Upon his return, he began the Galilean ministry and called his first disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Let us listen for God's word. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending you my messenger ahead of you and will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up and out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake uh, for they were fishermen. As Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in, a, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called, called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. And so ends the first reading. Will the younger church please come forward? Morning. How are you all this morning? 
morning. Good. That was a very enthusiastic good. <laughs> so for our Mender Sunday today, Mender Sunday is a day when we each do a little something to mend God's world. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of things in this world that need mending. Does anybody know what mending is? No. Does anybody out here know what mending is? Yeah? Fixing things? Um, in a time gone by that may still occur in some saints' homes here, it would also mean doing things like sewing our own clothes. That's pretty cool. I uh, know, right? That's pretty, that's pretty epic. Um, or sewing buttons back onto things. Or maybe like, have you ever been walking around and you see a little string dangling off of something? And uh, yeah? Yes, that happens sometimes to our shirts. So you might... Well, that can be part of mending. Sometimes we have to pull threads out that just shouldn't be dangling there anymore. But for us, for Mender Sundays, what we're doing is a little something to help stitch the world back together, to help get those little pieces of the world that are not going the way we think God might hope, uh, to be going in a direction of love and goodness. So today, everybody in their bulletins has, what is this? A bag. Now I want to assure our Earth Care congregation these are bags we already had or they would have been compostable, except compostable things dissolve in the rain. So we decided to go with plastic ones anyway. Why would that matter, I bet you wonder, that these don't dissolve in the rain? Well, inside of the bag is a little piece of paper and on here it suggests things we might fill our bag with. So it says we might fill it with say fruit cups with a spoon, or tuna and crackers, or hand warmers or foot warmers, or wool socks or gloves. What in the world are we making? We are filling these bags with things that we know our neighbors might need if they don't have a home. Have you been outside today? Yeah. Yeah, because you had to get here somehow, right? You went sledding? I want to know after worship how you did that without a lot of snow. That's very impressive. <laughs> Well, then you know all about snow and sledding, right? When it gets cold, do you ever get cold? No. Um, no? Doesn't. You have superpowers. Well, sometimes we need people to give us gloves or socks because we don't know to put them on, right? Other times, there are these things called hand warmers, and they come in a little pouch, and you'll see them when you go upstairs. And when people open them up, they activate just by being in the air, and they start to warm up over time, and they'll stay warm for like eight hours. So you can put them in your pockets, and they keep your hands nice and warm. You have to do that for softball. You do that for skiing, too. Oh, you guys are going to be so good at this. Because you're inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these bags. Guess who you're going to give them to? They're going to be full of snacks. They're going to be full of hand warmers and foot warmers. And you can take them home and add more things to the list if you want. But then you with your parents are going to keep them in your car so that when you see somebody who's outside and they're holding a sign maybe on the street. Have you ever seen somebody like at an intersection holding a sign that says like I'm hungry or I need help? Yeah, so these are called blessing bags. We're gonna fill them with goodies that will help our neighbors who don't have homes, and then we're gonna roll down the window with our parents and say, hey, my name's Katie. I mean, you won't say your name's Katie. <laughs> my name's Katie, what's your name? I have a bag full of blessings today. Would you like this? And then inside of it, all of the adults in the room are also gonna tear off this bottom section of the insert because this part has information for our friends without homes so that they know where they can get more food than what they'll have in this bag and how they can get help for rent assistance for getting a house or if they're having a really hard day there's a phone number there for somebody they can talk to so we're gonna take these bags with us and we're gonna go give a blessing to somebody who's cold because not everybody has your superpower of feeling warm all the time can we say a prayer together let's do a repeat after me prayer 
why don't we put money in it? Oh, that's such a good question. And we'll talk more, we can talk more about that together upstairs because the places in our area on this list, they have actually asked us that we don't put money in there, that we put food instead or warm weather supplies. You all have an epic story to hear during Mender Sunday. <laughs> Let's pray together. <laughs> Dear God, <laughs> thank you for blessings. Like ice cream? <laughs> like sledding without snow? <laughs> like never feeling cold? <laughs> we pray that you would help us to give others the gift of warmth and food and to know someone cares. And to know someone cares. Amen. Amen. All right, you all can head on to godly play and then we'll pack some bags together while you tell me where you're sledding without snow. God is so good. <laughs> we continue with our reading of Mark. Chapter 1, verses 21 through 45. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him? At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came over and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought him to all who were sick and possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and he would not permit them to speak because they knew him. Then in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Then a leper came to him, begging and kneeling. He said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into town openly, but stayed out in the country 
and people came to him from every quarter. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We begin at the beginning. There is nowhere else to start. But not all beginnings come with the twinkling lights of Christmas. Not all beginnings include the echoes of silent night sung by candlelight still ringing in our ears. Not all beginnings involve sweet little babies cuddled up, snuggled in our arms. The Gospel of Luke gives us so much of that kind of beginning, which we just heard on Christmas Eve. The Gospel of Matthew tells of the Magi in chapter 2, the little wise ones, bigger in real life, who follow that star. But Matthew's Gospel begins at an even earlier beginning in chapter 1, starting out with a genealogy of the family lineage to which Jesus is connected. The Gospel of John starts even earlier in poetic form with that well-known phrase, if I start it, I wonder if you can complete it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. In other words, even before creation, Jesus was there, one with God the creator from before the dawn of creation. That is a very early beginning. But the Gospel of Mark dives right in, past any notion of no room in the inn, swooshing way beyond the dawn of creation or family trees, for Mark begins with prophecy, first with the remembrance of Isaiah, then with John the baptizer paving the way for Jesus to arrive on the scene. In the Gospel of Mark, that beginning means listening first to what has already been said through the prophets. And then starting there at square one, it is into that tradition of prophetic voices that Jesus emerges onto the scene, ready for his own baptism, which prepares the way for his public ministry to begin. But Jesus begins his ministry in the tradition of those prophetic voices that came before him. And as we see in each of the stories read from this first chapter of Mark today, that here, he launches first into his ministry by refusing temptation, something we all have to work on in our lives, if we're honest. Then he calls disciples from beyond the bounds of highly educated society, something else that challenges us. Then he casts out demons and heals people from any number of ailments, only to confusingly tell them all to keep it hush-hush. Now, we'll look more at this messianic secret, as scholars call it, in the weeks of exploring Mark to come. But for today, I wonder what stood out to you in hearing the beginning. Because Jesus dives right in. There is no lingering. Even his whole 40 days of wilderness preparation, that season that we spend in Lent, where he's driven out by the Spirit, that lasted two sentences. Mark is ready for us to focus on what Jesus does as we wonder about what that all means for who Jesus is. Mark's Jesus is defined by action. And in that era, a person was known for their deeds and their personalities were understood to be revealed by their actions. As we make our way through this gospel over the coming months, I invite you to wonder what is Mark trying to tell us about the kind of person Jesus was through these specific stories presented in this specific order? Today, as we begin at the beginning, celebrating Epiphany with star words and fresh starts, perhaps we could direct that question inwardly. How does what we do reflect who we are in the world? There are so many different ways to reflect on our beginnings. And sometimes starting fresh is as simple and as complex as picking a point of orientation that directs our lives and our actions. 
Now, of course, for those gathered here today, our North Star is likely the one that we meet here in this opening chapter of Mark. For the Magi and Matthew, the point of orientation was that shining star. But for Mark, we move so quickly from prophecy to Jesus' own embodiment of it, from that inward orientation of Jesus' own temptation in the wilderness to his outward expression. This is love in an active sense. For us, our point of orientation can make all the difference, too. So whether we begin with our interior lives and hope that that moves us out toward action, or we begin with a commitment to simple actions, hoping that our beliefs will follow, there's no one definitive way to live that good news. And we see this in the ways that the Gospels each begin at their own different kinds of beginnings. So today, whatever point of orientation you choose, or whatever point of orientation seems to pick you, that may be the starting point you need to get you wherever God is asking you in particular to go. Because what we do in this world reflects who we can be in this world. We are called to act in faith, living a life in Christ defined by love and generosity and empathy. And let's just acknowledge from the beginning, we do not always answer that call well, or at all sometimes. We act in ways that fall short of the glory of God. We all do. But God's good news meets us there too. For what we do is only part of who we are. Who we are is not defined fully by what we do. As Brian Stevenson puts it, each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. Hear that again. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. Even still, the action-oriented gospel of Mark's beginning invites us to wonder, how would God send us out into this world for a fresh start? This new year, this new beginning, what will we do? And how will that reflect who we are? Seeking that integrity, that greater integration between these two, between what we believe internally and who we feel God is inviting us to be and become externally in our outward daily lives, that's the work of a lifetime. But it has to begin somewhere. It has to begin again somewhere. So how about now? This is more than a new year, new you kind of resolution, though. This is an invitation to allow God to be the one leading your reorientation, your returning to your baptismal vows. This is an invitation for all of us to hear that prophet, John the baptizer, crying out in the wilderness, repent, turn back to God, remember that God drenches us in God's own spirit, not only to sit and savor and hold on to it, that precious connection with the Holy One, but to go out into the world and live as though knowing God can actually make a difference. Our faith in Mark becomes alive and active. It is ascending, not just something being sent to us. So today, to begin again living this out, we have one individual invitation and one community invitation. And I hope that you'll engage both in some way. The first is the inv individual invitation to pick out a star word for this year. And you might be thinking, but the star was already in my bulletin. It picked me. <laughs> For those not yet familiar with the star word tradition on Epiphany, this is an opportunity for our word to choose us or for us to see if there is another word we feel led to choose. And then we'll spend this year of 2024 reflecting on how that word in particular shows up in our lives. It could be viewed as an intention word, perhaps, or as a word maybe that helps you to reflect at the end of each day at its close. For example, how will I live with compassion this year? Or in a more day-to-day -day way, how did I see compassion show up in my life today? There is a word on a star, admittedly, in each of your bulletins already, and if your star fell out, go seeking it. <laughs> 
when Julie has extras. But if the word in your bulletin does not resonate as your North Star for you this year, I invite you first to ask yourself why. Sit with it a little. See if it moves inside of you. And then take a look at the star on the bulletin and read the words out loud because, spoiler alert, these are the words that your neighbors have on their stars. See which one of those stands out to you as you prayerfully read them through. And if one stands out to you and rings true for your year ahead, write that word on your star too. Let it lead you throughout this coming year. And ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in learning what this word has to speak to your life or how this word will impact the larger world through your attention to it. The second invitation is to fill a blessing bag and then go meet Jesus when you give it away. The hope and intention with these make and take bags is that we will allow these bags to lead us to meet Jesus and introduce ourselves. Take the little bag up to that fellowship hall, fill it with some jerky. This is a vegetarian telling you something she may never say again. <laughs> fill it with some hand warmer, some chapstick, bring it home to add goodies that would warm your heart if you had nothing but the backpack on your back. What would you put in that bag that you would be overjoyed to have a stranger give to you? Make this your first fruits. Then keep it in your commute bag or your car until you see someone who needs a reminder that someone cares. This is our first small step this year as a community of faith in coming alongside our neighbors without homes. The Mission and Witness Committee decided in December that 2024 will be our year of service opportunities with Loudoun County Homelessness Services Center. So throughout this coming year, you will have chances to get involved in myriad ways, from cooking food in your home as we work together to create meals in our separate homes and then go together to serve the meals, to making sandwich bags for our neighbors to take with them for lunch at the hypothermia shelter, to going to provide a class or a craft time with the children or adults at the center. But we're gonna spend 2024 meeting Jesus in our unhoused neighbors and learn together about home, what homelessness really means and looks like here in our home. Because during this season when hypothermia is much greater risk, our local center has told us that they are seeing up to 80 to 100 people a night come in for emergency shelter when temperatures drop. And that's in addition to those they can support in their transitional and short-term housing. So we're gonna go get to know our neighbors beginning with that simple step of taking a blessing bag that goes with us, remembering that God in Jesus is indeed God with us. And for him, upon his entry, there was no room in the inn. So pick a word and pick up a bag, ask the spirit to guide you by a star and lead you to share a blessing with a neighbor. And together this year, we begin at the beginning, trusting that the God who is and was and will be is ready to make all things new. To God be the glory now and forevermore. Amen. Let us sing together verses 1 through 3 of hymn 727, Standing as you are comfortable, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant?
please be seated. As we consider our tithes and offerings, remember, God invites us to share our resources with one another in this world. Giving with gladness, may God bless the stewardship of our whole lives. Remaining standing, would you please join me in the prayer of dedication found in the bulletin. God, we give these gifts to you, praying that our giving would bring you honor, glory, and joy. Send your spirit to lead us in living. In your way, amen. Please be seated. Beloved of God, through Jesus, we know that God knows us, that God cherishes us, and that God loves us. Through Jesus, we believe and trust that God is faithful and God is true. So come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are worthy, but because you are hungry. Not because you are ready, but because you are thirsty. Come here because Christ invites us, saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. As Jesus took bread and cup and blessed it before sharing it, so we too give our thanks to God, saying, God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Christ came, the morning star of love. Christ died, the night star of salvation. Christ was raised, the radiant star of resurrection. Christ will come again, the consolation of hope. Will you pray with me? Holy One, thank you for leading us to this table of grace. Your people are hungry. Your people are ready. Your people are yours. We ask this day, God of the weary traveler, that you would tend to our dusty feet from the roads we've traveled this past week, this past year, and every day of our lives. You know, God, the ways that we have followed your star here looking for a glimmer of hope. And now after a long journey, we set our baggage down here at your table, we have arrived. We are here, and we know we are on holy ground. You may not show up where we expect you, but we trust that you are here nevertheless, praying that you would be known to us in the hope of the star, the peace of a baby snuggled in the manger, the joy of arrival, love that could not stay away. You are here at this table, and we, your people, give thanks. Together we pray to you as your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, we hear that on the night when Jesus was betrayed to the governing authorities, first he had supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take! Eat, this is my body. Do this, remembering me. In like manner, he took a cup. Giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. By inviting us to this meal, Jesus proclaimed for us today and every day that even from death, God can bring new life and new hope and new creation. May it be so in us and in God's whole world. Come to the light of the world, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, at this table where Christ is our host. Amen. The bread of life. The bread of life. Amen.
cup of salvation. The cup of salvation. The cup of salvation. The cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. As we partake of the cup of salvation today, I encourage you to look to your left and to your right. See the face of Jesus in those around you. Remember that God invites us to this table, that our everyday tables would be a remembrance also. The cup of salvation. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for feeding us with bread and cup. Thank you for nourishing us at your table that we might go out and nourish your world in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing our faith together as you are comfortable through hymn number 744, Arise, your light is come. light has come in love that could not stay away and friends that light that has come lives also in you so go out into this world reflecting that goodness in the name of the creator redeemer and sustainer god go in peace to love and serve amen <laughs>